Welcome back to Math in Real Life and this first series that we've made for food and farming or this first set that we've made regarding food and farming and how mathematics can be used um, to grow food. Some of the things that you need to do, some of the things that you have to think about when you're growing food, when you're setting up a small farm or a garden. Okay. Now what we're going to do in this video is basically go back to the conversation we had with Marvin Vanessa, I believe in the third video, and um, take out some little sections from from that meeting that I had with Marvin and Vanessa and the meeting was uh, quite, quite a long time we sat down and talked for about three four hours and there's a lot of information that they shared so what I've done is go back to that uh, the video and I've edited and took out little segments that might interest you if you're interested in farming and if you're interested in knowing some of the logistics involved uh, in growing your own food okay and that's what we're going to do uh, in this video that's what we're going to share in this video and when Marv and Vanessa come back after the season after they've done their farming gig uh, sometime in in fall the end of fall middle of fall what we'll do is uh, sit down and talk to Marv and Vanessa and find out exactly what it is they've done and how they've improved their farm some of the changes they might have made okay so this will be our last little uh, video for this initial set and what uh, Marv has done is uh, he's uh, you know we've been in contact through email and he sent me an email giving me an update of where they are right now some of the things that they're doing and some of the changes they're making and right now we're sitting of uh, in middle of June and this is where they are right now so I'm just gonna read you this little update that Marv sent me and as soon as I finish reading it we're gonna go to the little sections and just take a look at some random thoughts right uh, just random information that they shared uh, during the little uh, chat that we had and hopefully this will give you a better idea of um, you know the work that they're doing and what's involved in farming okay and um, the update goes as follows out here it's been busy enough and super wet. Uh, just when we thought it was drying out, a freaking tro tropical storm dumped rain for over 24 hours. We get in the field when it dries out enough, otherwise it's quicksand. Vanessa tilled up a square, um, about half an acre because we're quickly running out of space. We're at our goal of 40 customers. The seedlings are looking healthy as they go in, transplanted leeks, bok choy, Calarbi, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, and broccoli direct seeded about eight beds before the rain came. Feeling a bit squeezed by time and space constraints that seem to be a part of the CSA reality. Looks like we might have to cut out, cut out some of the market crops. The rainy days helped us plan stuff out and organize to make our workspace a bit more efficient. We've got a new soil mixer, greenhouse addition to keep stuff dry and work as a base for a solar panel which will power a fan and some tunes out here and maybe a door timer for the chicken coop. Plus a dedicated office space that will keep uh, that will be kept clean. Finally some running water up in the loft and we patched up patched our uh, clay oven so we can bake bread again. The next thing to deal with is chickens which we're picking up in two weeks. Don't know if we'll do electric fencing or regular chicken wire for the run. Probably settle for the cheaper option because at 10 bucks a bird ready to lay plus feed we want to make a bit of money. Unfortunately we couldn't find a place that has heritage breeds that was within driving within reasonable driving distance so we settled uh, for some standard high yield mutant. I hope they're not too fierce. I'm taking some video and photos uh, but not much time for processing and editing unless I start doing it overnight. I'll send you a few pics on my next online session. Okay and that's the last uh, bit of information that I have from them and it's middle of June 2013. What we'll do as soon as they get back uh, in fall at the end of fall maybe beginning of winter uh, we'll sit down and have a little chat with Marvin and Vanessa and find out exactly what it is that they ended up doing uh, this season and some of the improvements they might have made to the farm some of the additions they might have made to the farm and take a look at their data and uh, you know maybe we'll do a little bit more crunching and maybe graph some of the data and find out uh, uh, you know how mathematics uh, plays into this game plays into the uh, system of farming and how it can be used to optimize okay and uh, right now we'll just go and uh, take a look at some random thoughts from the conversation that we had uh, uh, in the past and hopefully uh, with all this stuff with the last you know this being the eighth video that we made for this set uh, this gives you a pretty good idea of uh, 
what it takes to grow food, to do farming, and how mathematics can be used uh, to optimize what it is that you're doing to improve your work. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. So you grow everything from seed. Uh, you don't do cuttings. No, I'm from no. seed, yeah. Everything from seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come you guys don't do cuttings? Um, cuttings is mostly with like a, like shrubs and brush, brush kind of thing. Like oh yeah, to uh, gr uh, yeah, peppers like you can't because they die. They're what are they called when they die? For They're annual. Annual. So perennial lasts all year. Yeah. And annual goes down, comes up. Yeah, you have to get the seed. They'll go to flower, and then you harvest the seeds, and okay. then you plant again. Wanna, when if you were growing for seed, you would be, you wouldn't be necessarily harvesting the same. Uh, well, you'd be waiting for it to go fully mature, but then you'd also be selecting the stronger ones, I guess, to to make sure you have like a hardy, a hardy seed when it. When so it how do you know? How do you know if something's stronger than? Well, you look at your plants and like determ depending on like if something has less disease, like if, oh, so if there's automatically. a certain disease that'll attack a plant, then you look for the one that's healthiest, and then you, size, obviously, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're growing for market, like the biggest thing. Yeah. And that decides basically. Uh, so you you end up saving those ones, some of those ones, and yeah, you, you get can the seeds off. Yeah, you them so that ah. way you won't harvest them. And ah, fuck yeah. But to yeah. do that, like at the same time as you know, like growing nice tasty veggies is kind of like you kind of have to have like a separate unless it's something like like what well, peas we saved yeah you could do it with almost anything but and we but did the peppers. cilantro and we did the um, dill yeah you um, saved the seeds yeah yeah wow. arugula we saved those were like pretty easy because they don't like cilantro and dill doesn't really cross pollinate and doesn't really so what happens if they cross pollinate? You get a new variant. Yeah, especially with like fruiting things, like um, say with your cucumbers, like everything that's in the cucurbit family, they could potentially cross pollinate. So like your cucumber and your zucchini and certain types of like squash and pumpkin could cross. Okay. So then like your cucumber might still look like a cucumber, or it might have a different color, or it might have like a different flesh that's not as juicy, and oh. you might get interesting stuff. Yeah, but you don't know. But you, you don't can't know count exactly. on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't count on that. Like ah. with squash, you get all these kind of weird, shaped, weird colored things that maybe don't taste so good. And oh, really? Like, that's how I they get the different types of squashes. You got all these variants. Yeah, well, someone bred them at some point, I guess. Yeah. Oh, so you could come up with a whole new species of. Wow. Yeah, for sure. There's some people that are so, doing yeah. it on purpose, like this. I don't know if you saw that with me. Um, you care me of? No. I don't know, it was this guy, he was doing like growing pumpkins mostly for gourds that he would then uh, make art with or decorations or whatever. Oh. He was doing like bird houses and then he was doing all sorts of like painted stuff on them. Um, but he was trying to like select gourds for like the oddest shapes so he would like actually hand pollinate his like fields oh. like experiment with different shapes that he would come up with. So you go with like a Q-tip and... And you pollinate just like a bee. Play yeah. bee. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's time consuming. Oh, God. Yeah, but for something <laughs> like that, it's just your like, main yeah. thing. That's sort of a hobby then. I think yeah. it was like a pretty big business. Like, pretty big business. Yeah, there's a huge field of squash. And uh, like. But the thing, too, like with monocrops like that, with the acreage that they have and stuff, like, I think it'd be pretty impossible to grow anything. I mean, sure, like there are organic grains and stuff, but I think it's at a way smaller scale because, like, keeping on top of like, you know, like fungus that af that affect grain crops and yeah. like the um, corn borer that affects the corn crops, like you couldn't really do much about it, right? If you were if you were trying to grow it organic and you have this like huge, huge field, like how do you do it? And if it's always like planted at the same spot year after year, then like the insects they go in the ground. And then they come back in the spring. Oh and yeah, then they so multiply, they're like, crazy, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. If your food's always there, they're just gonna like populate. Oh yeah, that's right. It's exponential growth for exactly. insects. Exactly. Yeah, it really <laughs> is exponential growth for insects. Yeah. That's why people. That's why you need to have like rotations and things yeah. like that or fallow. Oh, that's why they're that. doing your rotation. So the insects that feed off a certain crop can't feed off of the other crop. 
Exactly. Yeah. Or for yeah, or to cleanse the soil or whatever. Like whatever I think it is. in in China they do, or probably elsewhere as well, they do peanuts and cotton, and they kind of like the cotton um, somehow cleanses the pesticides a little bit from the soil. And they have to have opposing seasons. That would be ideal, right? If you're um, rotating crops, I, this the growth, next year. You do next year. Yeah, or you yeah. could do like three years of one and then three, three years, years of, of another or something. Yeah. So are you are you guys gonna are you gonna take uh, are you gonna create a table for this season? Uh, if you yeah. uh, sit there and actually chart out what you got, are you guys weighing things or you're not weighing things? We are uh, something. We haven't done like we kind of regret it not like doing like a getting gross tonnage kind of yeah thing. yeah that's <laughs> what i'm that's thinking cool, about yeah. yeah yeah no that'd be great but we only weigh the stuff that like we Put say there. like lattice or lettuce we have to have like four or five ounces or like beans like you you, you charge by or not charge but like you give it's by the pound. a dollar amount by the pound okay or if you take it to market you want a pound bag of peas or whatever so that stuff we weighed but we never we never marked it down uh -huh. like we could kind of it estimate but yeah this year yeah. i think we'll we'll try and like tally it up and see how much like yeah how what you're getting we produce yeah how much that food did you produce like that would be, I think super be quite cool. a bit i wish I could, that we had tilled more land last fall it's always like that like the first year when we got there the second yeah. year we were like Shit, we should have like yeah tilled more land and then but i hate using the tractor so that's why i always kind of like push it to the what last. i don't know because it's it's not ideal to break up uh, like the like soil ground like yeah. that with a tiller like usually you'd want to like beat it up with something else before like with oh. a, a disc or what i would choose but we don't have that or like you could plow it flip all like a plow takes the ground and like flips it around flips it like that oh and the discer just makes slices so you have to like oh the discer is the thing that goes like this right they're, they're just, just like, like discs that roll so they like yeah, make yeah i've slices. seen those yeah yeah they're not like mechanized they just you just pull it along like, oh okay, okay 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 the tiller is the one that goes oh okay, okay. oh so, so you're totally mixing it up yeah, yeah. And it's really hard on like the tilling basically for, okay right it's real, yeah, it's yeah, that's what it is. yeah, but we have like a lot of rocks in the soil. So when you're doing your first passes on like a fresh piece of land, oh, then the you rocks, get these like yeah. chunks and like, I'm always so afraid of breaking it. That's why I don't like using it. Oh, okay. then, like, if a rock gets caught in the tines and the tiller tines, then it like, well, the transmission is designed to do it too. Yeah. So it'll like oh. slip, the transmission will slip. But it just does this sound, it's like da 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 Oh no. And then you like don't know if you broke something and But it doesn't take long to till it, you just park it at one end and go Yeah, but you have to go like a lot of times on it. to get the So you do it a few times the first time and then you kinda let the sun beat the kill the roots, kill the weeds because it's perennial weeds, like a lot of it is quack grass. Okay. So if if you leave it there, it'll just like grow again. Grow again if it rains. But if uh, ideally it's a sunny day, so it'll get baked, oh. and then you want to pass again to expose more roots and again. Oh, that's yeah. how you get rid of the weed. Uh, yeah, eventually it dies off. I mean, off. The, they will come back even. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah, you got a weed, but but still. Yeah. Yeah, there's figuring out water. Like we, hit, there's there's water issues, and. Uh, are you you're bringing in water from a creek or something or what are you guys doing from a hose from, from a hose from okay do you guys pay for the water is it like here no it's a pay? well it's oh it's well yeah well on the land on the yeah. land yeah but it's a bit far so we have like to use 400 feet of hose Ooh. so that's and by the time it gets there it's not much pressure yeah so it's is there a pump at the hose at the well uh, no, it's at my brother's house. We're on my brother's land. It's on my grandfather's oh, so, land. Oh, so it's, you're going through the... They're getting it from the wild, and yeah. you're getting it from their tap. Uh -huh. we, have, uh, we have that water from the house there, but then we wanted just sort of a backup water system for out in the field. So we, we got this, like, 1,000-liter thousand, thousand tank, yeah, and uh, we were just figuring out, like, okay, if it's just sitting there, it's not going to do anything. Like, we want to have a gravity feed. Just so we can water a bed at a time, or something, okay, yeah. a drip hose, or something. Yeah. Um, but then, so yeah, we were trying to figure out: do we have to put it up like twenty feet off the ground, or, you know, how are we gonna, how are we gonna fill it, or is the rain <laughs> gonna fill it, or what? 
Anyway, we ended up just putting it up maybe five feet mm -hmm. off the ground or four or five feet and just filling it with that hose for for times when it was dry or something needed oh. irrigation. And there was a bit of pressure, but it wasn't like, it wasn't enough no. to... It wouldn't do a drip hose. It did do the it drip did hose. Do, all the way to the end of just the Just a little, it just to like... To the end, barely. It didn't <laughs> go as much as like, like it probably should have been not I mean, they're pretty like them, but concentrated, like drip hoses, but yeah. we had to leave it on for a while, like longer than you would. Because yeah. I think they actually work for like 7 PSI, the drip hose. Like, they're supposed to be for like low pressure. Yeah. If you have too much pressure, it'll like... Oh, there's shoot out or something. Yeah, oh. I don't know. Oh, but yeah, it would, I guess, at the really beginning of the tube, and then at the end, it'd be like, oh. Yeah. But then once this the... This is your department. I've never played around with these things. <laughs> but once, it, like, the water level dropped to, like, halfway, then... Like, the pressure was, was gone. Right. Uh, so okay. we only had, like, 50... Um, 500 liters to work with. But yeah. that was only on emergency situations. You were going to use it, yeah, or yeah. The thing and, is, the whole summer was sort of an emergency. It was super dry, dry. Uh, yeah. so we were kind of struggling. So I mean, wa water is a huge issue for you guys. Like the, your biggest issue is water. We didn't think it was going to be because I kept saying that with Martin was like, "We got to plan our water." Yeah. And I was like, "The first oh, New summer, Brunswick, like it rains yeah. at least once a week." Yeah. <laughs> the first summer we didn't water once. Like it was we didn't. Too wet. It was really. It was really rainy. But okay. I mean it. It was beautiful because we didn't have to water. Yeah, just no water. It wasn't even an issue. And then last year, I mean, like Ontario had it terribly, and like all the states, you know, if you heard about yeah, like all the droughts and the stuff, droughts brutal. And yeah, and there was yeah, there was a few times you walk out to the field, and it was just like just this it turned hard, like because it's kind of clay soil. Yeah, and, uh, it was just like rock hard and really parched looking and so we were, things started wilting and it's like yeah, well, we, we got a few water out there things so how d so your your yield went way down for those weeks or for those um, it, or you like dealt it with affected it? more like of the like tomatoes are affected mm. because then we get those droughts for like a couple of weeks and then after that we get this like big rain or not even that big a rain no, we're always like expecting day, like a lot of rain, rain but nothing really came but tomatoes will crack Oh. When they're like, they need too like, much water in one shot. Exactly. Yeah. Ah. So they're like dry. It's kind of like stretch marks or something. Yeah. Like, oh, that's why some tomatoes get. Like. Oh, I didn't know why some tomatoes were like cracked. Yeah. I was like, oh, someone dropped them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like all of a sudden they got full of liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's they're cool. really so our tomatoes were not the prettiest. Ah, okay, but. Because those, once you get that that crack, that'll rot easier. So yeah. it's like kind of like not a good. Oh, you have okay. to eat it right away, and the people too. We kind of gave them a warning. We're like, our tomatoes are not the prettiest, but they're tasty. Oh, okay, good enough. Yeah, yeah. And we got some comments. They're like, good thing you s told me that you gave us that email. Uh, I don't know. I saw these tomatoes, <laughs> but oh, they were so good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they're just grotesque, like weird stuff. looking. Yeah. That was. Uh, but you guys got a lot of variety. Like you're planting how many different things? Close to know. forty, I'd say. Forty different things. I, I mean, there's like different varieties of one. Like there'd be three types of peas, for example. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Different types of uh, kale. So, are you doing this uh, yeah. as an experiment to see which which is going to grow, what you're getting? Like, are you? But you don't know yet because you haven't counted your yields. You haven't. You plant. Also, the reason why you choose different varieties is because, like, some things are better uh, when it's colder, some things are better when it's warmer. So, like, oh, lettuce, so for example. Like, lettuce doesn't really like heat that much, but there's certain varieties that have been bred to be, like, heat tolerant. So, okay. in the spring, you'll plant a lettuce that's, like, cold tolerant, and then in the fall, in the um, late spring, for the, like, heat of the summer, then you'll plant a lettuce that's heat tolerant. Okay. And you do that with different crops, too. There's, like, a certain type of pea that's like it was bred for like early harvest so it's like 50 days to maturity compared to 62 okay. but the one that's 62 days to maturity is bred for flavor so that's like the best pea oh so then you have like your earlier pea that you bring to the market early but then like your better tasting pea will be like 12 days later oh okay, okay so cool. you plant that one just so it's earlier okay. which is good oh but yeah the, the ways too i mean like you see like industrial farms that or I, I remember going at like a pickle farm and or a cucumber farm and they were selling stuff to Bix and like they oh had yeah. these sort of like 
quotas of like or like the cutoff sizes of like you know you need pickles this big or like 60 cents a pound and then if they get this big they're like 30 and then if they're oh. like bigger than this it's like you can't even sell it so oh, they really? ended up dumping you know, anything that was bigger than a certain size and then like Garbage. the size the side of the fields were just like littered with completely edible delicious uh, cucumbers, oh, cucumbers but not saleable so, so they're they're thrown away as they're picking them yeah yeah, it's really sad. Like, you get that on every farm. Like, even us, we had some waste, too. Like, there's just sometimes that and you, yeah, just, you just can't overproduce. eat it all. Like, yeah. you try, but... Yeah. So you, you make compost like, out of it, yeah? Yeah, and we yeah. Have, like, always do that, yeah, for yeah. sure. But Soon, yeah. So what are you doing with uh, food-wise? Like, how are you feeding the, the crops? Uh, like, compost kind the of compost. Thing. You're doing compost. There's... Uh, there's compost that we got. We got a like a truckload full of, which is uh, made of uh, fish waste from from fish plants. Oh, so you're buying the compost? Uh, the fish we waste. bought basically one one load, which was a, it, it was a guy that collected this this waste from fish plants. Oh, and cool. There's also like peat farms out there, peat moss. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know how they extract it, but it's kind of a it's of, destructive, isn't it? It's pretty bad, yeah. They, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they drain wetlands, and that's where all the good stuff is. Yeah. Anyway, so there's there's peat companies, peat moss companies out there that supply most of North America, and um, wow, they're draining like. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, they're within somewhere. reason, they have a quota they can take out, right? Yeah, there. It's like based on some. I'm sure there's some protected land that they don't go in, but okay. anyway, the stuff we're getting is um, the stuff this guy makes is sort of secondary or it's too dry for them to sell or something like this and he mixes it with the fish waste oh um, wow. so it's this peat moss and the, the fish waste and uh, so it's pretty like pretty rich stuff pretty so it's good so that's what you're using for fertilizer for food mm-hmm. yeah victoria uh, my partners in victoria victoria just introduced uh, they gave every, every resident composting little container Oh, yeah. with biodegradable bags like they were she, you know she's she's a huge gardener and stuff so she does gardening but and they they were composting before mm-hmm. but now they have a, like a container composting thing and they gave them garbage cans that are compost garbage cans so you empty your food in in a different garbage can now and the garbage truck comes and takes your garbage and takes your food as compost cool so i'm guessing that victoria's got a land i haven't looked into it yet has got some kind of land where they're going to take all this food and compost it and ideally they should be selling that like i'm pretty sure that must be in the plans they have like these big um i'm not sure what victoria has but i think vancouver has like they have like these big massive composters too that like turn it and everything where do you get the f- compost from where do vancouver you collects uh food waste too the guard the in the, the you know the yard trimming, yard trimming box. Oh, the yard trimming. Yeah. Now yeah. you can put compost in it. You can put compost in that now. Since I think last. I guess so. Last year. Oh it, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Oh. They were phasing it in. It, I don't, maybe now it's every week, but it used to be every second week they would collect the the food waste, and then there's multiple phases. Then it would go to every week, oh. and after they're gonna introduce uh, meat and like all sorts of cooked food and stuff because right now you can't put meat or cooked food oh it's okay, only cool. like your the, the stuff you would put in your own the, the garbage thing like you leftover whatever not leftover but not not cooked okay. yeah exactly okay okay, yeah. okay but there are multiple phases and later it'll be like anything food oh that's great cool. or oh i don't know vancouver i'm interested yeah. yeah yeah that's fantastic it was kind of late i thought for mm-hmm. vancouver's Greenest well, city in the planet. Yeah, like no, it's not the can. No, it's not the greenest. City. Not even close. <laughs> like, I know. In but Toronto, they've like been doing. They have worm composters. You can get like a little worm box supplied. Do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've and seen they those. Have, they yeah. have green compost as well, and they like they have green bins, blue bins, and then the worm, worm bins, and it's all. The city's providing the that. Yeah. Oh That's wow! Cool. That's the fantastic. Last, I mean, since like two thousand five or two thousand four or something. Oh wow! So that's pretty. The cool. worm juice is supposed to be amazing for the. Yeah, yeah, here it's yeah. pretty good. Man. I looked into that before a few years ago. Not a few years ago, like two years ago, three years ago. Castings or warm castings? castings. Is that it's like you build a little wooden thing and you have your soil and you put it on a little angle and whenever you want fertilizer, you go 
pour water on your warm <laughs> bed. And you got a little collector here. It collects the juice. And <laughs> you go water your plants, and that's it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. Mm-hmm.